bacteria for which all of us assume was a cause of infection, which is true, and a cause of sepsis is not really a major pathogenic aspect. Bacteria is necessary, but not always necessary. But what causes the problem are this reaction of I mean reaction. I know the immune system has got two in it uh, reaction uh, as well as uh, acquired. Now, what happens is that most of us react to foreign. I know this from your basic immunology. And I was told that the only pathologies, no immunology, I think also no some immunology. But to every uh, insult to your system, there's always a rapid response and a slow response. And uh, most of the rest of them are human. Both of them involve both human rock and cellular. But the rapid response is more human rock engagement. And the latter response, the delayed response, the one which is involving a lot of cellular. Now, basically, we say this is an infection, which may be an abscess, pneumonia, peritonitis, cellulitis. And the organism has two things, because it's an exotoxin or some structural component. Forget about the component. The important thing is that you have the cytokines produced by macrophages and monocytes and endothelial cells, and those are the kinins and complement from the splice and which affect the coagulation. The other aspects also contribute to cellular dysfunction. And all this results in septic shock, which will affect the vascular system, vascular irritation, the organ dysfunction, and myocardial depression, which results in MOT, other renal shock, and finally mortality, which I don't like using as a mild and so this is well, now we know roughly about what happens in sepsis. The, the problem is not what happens, but how to manage it. And two things to prevent mortality. And the way to prevent mortality is to reduce the amount of design, uh, the amount of um, damage to automatic organs. As we were going to this morning, the, uh, the good message told us to reduce the complication so that even the mortality occurs a cast with a good body, not with a bad body. This is the same thing anyway. Uh, systemic strategies are, first of all, you must identify early those patients who have got severe sepsis and admit appropriate antibiotics and source control. But above all, you must have an institution within your hospital to establish the goal for situation resuscitation and institutionally match this uh, uh, response. And Mohammed have never been in most cases. There's so many people you know, involved in sepsis. Very unlikely to have severe sepsis, which you know affect. So basically, these are the, uh, the outline of treatment. Recognize the situation early, good free therapy, as always, and in other blood culture, you may have to do for culture. Give antibiotic therapy <coughs> if you can identify the source and control it. And uh, steroids have been used over the years. And uh, we'll talk about them later, what they do. And now the proper ventilation almost always necessary. So in short, source control, antibiotic, resuscitation, and supportive care will reduce mortality. Okay? Now mortality is the end point here, is just reducing the mortality. Okay. Steroids have been used on and off, on and off. And uh, as I said earlier, use them if you like. They may do no harm. They may do good and they're cheap stuff. Fine, to use it. But they don't they don't help much about mortality. The other things we can talk about, which will introduce to you know, reduce mobility, unfortunately they don't work as we shall see shortly. Tight glycemic control is very important in sepsis. And of course we talked about it this morning. Oh, was that chronic or is that cute? Yes, it was not. That yes was chronic. Now, probably somebody talked about the tonic and semi control in, um, in uh, sepsis, which is a uh, good nutrition. Uh, all this are supposed to reduce mortality and getting antagonists to this myriad of things. There's so many demonics, uh, um, cytokines, matokines, and uh, genomics, and immunogenics. There's so many, I don't know how. The studies are very clever. How you, how they recognize a thousand and one small things. You can see them 
I don't know how they see that. Does everybody know? Why well, not a better than me? Okay. <laughs> But there are very many of these factors and inhibitors that have been identified through immune chemistry. But as you said earlier, those are the core principles of treatment in asthma. Now, over the years, it has shown clearly that antibiotics are quite important. That's, and it's not the only way that you can reduce mortality and morbidity because you know very well that from pathogenesis of sepsis is more of immune reaction and the cytokine and inflammatory, there's, there's hyper immune activation and also immune suppression. And you know, like in HIV now, but the more, the killing thing in HIV now is not immunosuppression, but immuno, immune hyper activation. In fact, now, most patients you see with HIV, they'll be fine and overweight and having a feature of mean hyperfusion. That's a shifting barrier. Before we are killed, we are worried about high, I mean, the immunosuppression, killing people, but now it's not otherwise, we have reversed it. We have overgone to the other means, dysregulation. And you see a lot of, in fact, even if you check the, C, I mean, the, the CD, the cells, it was a problem with CD8 is more important now in uh, seeing how well HIV is controlled rather than CD4 count. But CD4 count was important when you are mainly concentrating on immunosuppression. suppression. But there are several, there are several therapies that have gone clear, gone to trial, and a lot of them over the years. Unfortunately, they have almost uniformly failed. Many for one reason, because we, if you see a hundred and one, uh, I tend, and you only target one. It's impossible to target all of them. So you only target one of these items that makes life very difficult for you to succeed. But these are the possible uh, agents that are involved in, uh, in sex, severe sepsis that causes the morbidity and mortality. So many paid uh, molecules have been tried in all the years, all that one failed to save more life, but it's just, it was, it failed to save more life than a, plac than a placebo in the final state, which is very sad, okay? So if you've got any, any intervention that probably improves the outcome by less than 25%, you're probably just a placebo. Because it's said that naturally for every disease, there's about 25% so-called biological cure. And doctor, yes, I just talked about high mortality in a TB. But his great grandfathers had TB. They never have anti TB drugs, but they never all died. And if you remember the famous trial done in Madras in the 60s, where they took was the many Indians so they could afford it, you lose some of them. So they took they took about a several there were three groups. One third were given anti TB drugs. The other, I mean, the one half were given anti TB drug. The other half were not given TB drug. And they followed. They were all positive. They were followed for five uh, years. At the end of five years, 25% uh, were fully cured. Sputum negative. The other 25 were chronic. Uh, positive secretors, but 50% of the people they died. So there's always a molecular cure for everything. So if your intervention, you can go, you only improve it in 5%. You know that's, you know that it's the body, it's your body which is improving <laughs> and not another agent. So you have to agree, it's probably maybe that's 75. So know that now this. Adio, this uh, agent was uh, Ella Lily was welcomed with pomp and glory. And I remember they took a number of us physicians. I remember me, Dr. Ewan Jenga, and other people. Like Take it to South Africa overnight to launch this one night drug in sepsis. And uh, I came back, I used it one or twice. And before I could say that to use it, it was with the drone because <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty useless and expensive. And there are many other, there are many, there are many others. So there's some gaps 
in our management of safety. We see that agree as we see safety remains a leading cause of morbidity and mortality. Although bacteria causes the death, malnutrition is not merely due to bacteria, okay, but rather to paralysis of the immune system and un uncontrolled immune system inflammation. That's why we need to involve and uh, evoke something that will control this system, which is now born uh, in the control. Okay, and new drugs. So we, many workers have been working on the ground based on amino modulation therapy. But let's see that probably we almost reach the end with antibiotics. The very few antibiotics in the pipeline, and the few that we have now already produce a lot of resistance to almost every organism. So we have to look other ways to help the antibiotics. And not very well, antibiotics don't work so well, like in other medicine, if there's poor immunity, immune suppression. And such is causing immune suppression. So you expect that the antibiotics will not be as good. So you need what we do assist with this uh, molecular pattern, mainly the debate system, inflammatory, that are produced in Severe so sepsis are uh, cell and proteins produced by the liver in the presence of inflammation. Well. Uh, this is what we need to check. So some people in the Asian, I have a lot of trial in Asia, particularly in Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, India, Thailand, I did a lot of trial uh, looking at amino uh, modulation agents in the name of uh, unistacid. This Basically, it inhibits cytokines, so it reduces the levels of uh, t manipulating alpha and of course the famous the leukin 6, okay? So it suppresses the activity of neutral elastase and prevents, of course, the IC. It also prevents provision of MOT in sepsis. It reduces, it reduces the organ dysfunction and above all reduces mortality in sepsis. So probably is an improvement in, uh, and this is how it proceeds in this simple that graph. It increases anti-inflammatory cytokines and decreases pro-inflammatory cytokines. Because the interplay between in inflammatory cytokines and pro-cytokines that produces all the multiple organ function through those processes that you don't need to understand. But you know they are. You know they are. Okay. It inhibits various enzymes in the body that are often there. Uh, and uh, just know it does a lot of things. And there are several indications for it. And that is something semi shock, acute pancreatitis, also rooted in the uh, ARDS, uh, TB infections, uh, post surgery. Uh, I mean, almost any student that is often associated with severe uh, sepsis, it may interplay in the modulation. It's, it's now a novel drug, and um, they, so far they are not serious, but we went anti uh, adverse reaction, and the reduction of suffering in such in such is another internal condition. Animal data suggests that uh, benefits in mortality and organ destruction. It can be used in such shock in acute pancreatitis, particular, which is a very common thing, and it's called a urine. And I must say, I've not been paid to promote it. But I thought it might be a good idea to talk about it.